Fred Sinclair. I work with Agri Alliant Genetics, a corporate product manager in uh, the U.S. and Canada. And over the past few weeks, I've done a fair bit of traveling through uh, Indiana, Illinois, Iowa, up into Minnesota, across back into Ohio. And the crop, generally, for how it started, later planting, looks fairly good. Probably at flowering or tasseling, we're looking at maybe 15 to, to 20 percent behind where we were in 2010, um, probably 10 to 15 percent behind what is normal. But you do have to remember it is only the 11th of July, and, and if we get some, some good weather, which they are in some of the western states, they're getting precipitation, um, you know, things will catch up and, and move right along. Um, some of the states, like Iowa, compared to last year, Iowa was fairly wet in a lot of the areas, and this year the crop looks pretty good. Uh, generally, growers extended their planting, similar to probably what they did up in Canada, and uh, planted on into June, mainly due to the, where the prices were. So you do see some variability in fields at planting stage because of that. And you also see a lot in, in some of the other states like Ohio, Michigan, and the northeast quarter of Indiana, where we really had a lot more rain. Um, they really didn't get a chance to get some of the earlier corn in, and, and the majority of the crop went in the latter part of May, early June. Those areas now are in the need of some moisture. It's uh, quite hot here. Looks like it's going to be hot this week with some scattered thunderstorms. And I'm kind of hoping that uh, we do get some precipitation because the later planted corn is under a bit of stress already. Um, it is a critical time pollination, and, and really that has a big fact on where yield's going to go. I really think the states like uh, Nebraska, Illinois, Iowa, uh, Minnesota, uh, you know, probably even a portion of North Dakota. South Dakota was hit fairly hard with a wet, wet start as well, but those other states I'd mentioned are setting up for, for some pretty good yields. I mean, I, when you're looking at the estimate yields at this time, I kind of like to see ears before you start start throwing out numbers. But just how the crop looks in those particular states, um, other than Indiana, again, uh, Michigan and Ohio and South Dakota, the, the general amount in the, uh, the corn belt looks fairly good. It is behind, but again, I, I want to caution that on July 11th, you can do a lot of catching up quick. Um, if I had my wish, we would see, you know, 85 degree days with, with uh, three quarters of an inch of rain every six days, but we may not get that in each state. Um, that's kind of an overview on corn. On soybeans, um, you know, one thing I've noted is you've seen a lot of soybeans that are kind of moving into that flowering stage again in Indiana, Ohio, and Michigan. Um, and those, those soybeans are, are kind of looking for some rain. In Illinois, Iowa, Minnesota, you've got a lot of crop, second, third, trifoliate moving into flowering, and, and they've had a pretty good start. The real difference I see is those cornfields that had good weather, good planting conditions, and again, because of where the markets were, guys tended to plant some corn after soybeans. and. For that, you know, I hope we have a, a nice fall, a bit of an extended fall, because that crop will need some time to, to finish. But, uh, you know, looking at it now, comparing to 09, uh, 10, there, you know, 09 was a pretty difficult season in a lot of areas in the Midwest. 10, we're probably just lagging behind a little bit, but we, we will likely catch up fairly quickly.